Welcome back to Harbour Unbox. Today we're taking a look at a product that I feel is borderline scammy, anti-consumer at best. And hey, maybe I'm just being dramatic. So we'll take a look at it and see what you think. The product in question is one of the sort of new AM4 processors that AMD's recently released, which of course is technically not a new processor, but rather binned silicon repackaged as something new. And I've got to admit, AMD got me on this one. I was pretty excited to hear that there was a Ryzen 7 5700 incoming, and that's because the 5700X is one of the best value CPUs available right now, and that's certainly true for AM4 owners. Now, it has sold for as little as $170 US, which is amazing value for a relatively powerful 8-core 16-thread processor. So, my initial assumption was that the 5700 would be a 5700X with 100 to 200 megahertz lopped off, and a price tag of about $150 US or less. But you know what they say about assumptions, and damn it, they're right. Last week I threw down a thousand Australian dollars to buy all of the new AM4 processors, including the 5700X3D, which we've already looked at now. But getting back to the 5700, here's the issue. And to best illustrate the problem, let's go back to the original Ryzen 1000 series. Back in 2017, you could buy X or non-X versions of multiple models, with the only difference being the clock speed. Though of course all of the parts were unlocked anyway, so it didn't really matter too much. But for example, the Ryzen 5 1600X and 1600 were effectively the same part, as was the Ryzen 7 1700X and 1700. Then we got the Zen Plus parts in the form of the Ryzen 2000 series, and we saw a similar naming structure. The 2600X and 2600 were the same part with a minor clock speed discrepancy, and the same was also true of the 2700X and 2700. Now with the Ryzen 3000 series, we did get a lot more models. Pretty heavy product segmentation was now taking place with the growing success of Ryzen. But for the most part, the same rules applied. The Ryzen 9 3900X and 3900, for example, they were the same CPU, so the same core count, same cache configuration. Again, the only difference being a 300 megahertz clock speed advantage for the X variant. And technically this was true for all retail models. However, AMD did release a non-X version of the 3500X, but it was only seen in the OEM channels. So it was called the 3500. But with this part, they broke an unwritten rule. Whereas the 3500X came armed with 32 megabytes of L3 cache, the non-X version retained the same core configuration and even the same operating frequencies, but saw its L3 buffer slashed in half to just 16 megabytes. But this model managed to fly under the radar for years as it was an OEM only part, meaning you couldn't just go and buy it, at least not without purchasing an entire system, which we probably would have done if it wasn't for the fact that it wasn't exclusive to Japan. So AMD got away with that example, at least with us, and that's a shame because the 3500 is a very misleading product. Halving the L3 cache has a huge impact on performance, especially gaming performance. So keeping basically the same name, big no-no. Now moving over to the Ryzen 5000 series, we again find for the most part, things are as they should be. So non-X models, such as the Ryzen 5 5600, are the same as the X variants, but with a slight reduction in clock speed, 200 megahertz in that example, and that results in a very minor performance drop. As a result, most opted for the 5600 over the 5600X, as it offered basically the same performance for what was typically around a $30 US saving. And of course, being unlocked, you could overclock it if you wanted to. So, with the recent arrival of the Ryzen 7 5700 to retail markets, I'm willing to bet most people will just assume that the 5700 is a 5700X. So, what the 5600 is to the 5600X. But sadly, that is not the case at all, and far from it in fact. Rather than a slightly wound down 5700X, the 5700 is actually a 5700G, but with the integrated graphics disabled. This means the 32 megabyte L3 cache of the 5700X has been halved to 16 megabytes, a significant reduction which will hurt performance. It also forgoes PCI Express 4.0 support, limiting PCIe bandwidth to the 3.0 spec, another fairly major downgrade. Now, releasing a 5700G but without an iGPU is perfectly fine. 
but really it should be called the 5700F, or probably really the 5700GF. Either way, it absolutely shouldn't simply be called the 5700, that is incredibly misleading. Initially, AMD had planned to get away with this deception by simply selling the 5700 on the OEM market and have done so since April 2022, only announcing retail availability back in December of last year, with actual availability only happening locally over the past few weeks. I purchased my model from PC Case Gear for 270 Australian dollars, which is currently the same price that you can purchase a 5700X for, though you do get the Wraith Stealth Cooler with the 5700. So you might be thinking, okay then, no harm done. Anyone paying attention would just buy the 5700X if the 5700's the same price. I guess fair enough, but also keep in mind the 5700 has just been released, so it's likely pricing will settle down shortly, seeing the 5700 come in a bit cheaper than the 5700X. And looking over at Newegg.com, that's certainly the case with US pricing, as the 5700 has been listed at $175 US, while the 5700X is currently $205, so a 15% discount there. And that's possibly more problematic, as the $30 US saving is more likely to see buyers go with the 5700, especially when it's unclear what the real differences between the two are. Anyway, we've established now that the 5700 and 5700X are very different products, despite what you might assume based on the naming. So how does the 5700 perform? Well, to find out, we've got a series of gaming benchmarks, which I'm going to briefly show you before we take a look at the 12 game average, because spoiler alert, as I've said, this thing is merely a 5700G with the iGPU disabled. Okay, into the benchmarks we go, and starting with ACC, we see just how slow the 5700 is relative to the 5700X, and even six core models such as the much cheaper Ryzen 5 5600. In this example, the 5700X is 22% faster than the 5700, meaning no matter which GPU you use, the 5700 can't render more than 94 FPS in this test. Moving on, we have Assassin's Creed Mirage, and here the 5700X is 16% faster than the 5700, but again, even the Ryzen 5 5600 is faster, though only just in this example. Still, as you'd expect, once you know the specifications, the 5700 performs like a 5700G. The margin is even smaller in Cyberpunk 2077, but even so, the 5700X is still 13% faster than the 5700, which is a bigger margin than you'd expect based on just the model names alone. The 5800X, for example, it's a mere 1% faster than the 5700X, and typically you'll find just a 1-3% to difference between X and non-X models. Like what we saw in ACC, the 5700 gets destroyed by the 5700X in Hitman 3, offering 22% more performance. And again, the Ryzen 5 5600 is also a good bit faster, as the additional L3 cache is key here. With ray tracing enabled, every last frame matters in Hogwarts Legacy, and the extra 15% offered by the 5700X led to a noticeably better gaming experience. The Spider-Man remaster results are interesting, as this game is very memory sensitive, and CPUs that are limited to DDR4 memory really rely on cache performance. The 5700X, for example, is 15% faster than the 5700 when comparing the average frame rate, but a massive 40% faster when comparing 1% lows. Star Wars Jedi Survivor is another game that's very memory sensitive, and we again see that cutting the L3 cache capacity in half really hurts 1% lows. In this example, the 5700X was 14% faster when comparing the average frame rate data, but 37% faster when comparing 1% lows. I think at this point you get it, we don't need to go over half a dozen more games to work out that the 5700 is a 5700G when paired with a discrete GPU. So here's the 12 game average data, and as you can see, on average, the 5700X is 16% faster than the 5700, or 19% faster when comparing 1% lows, but we did see a few examples where the margin blew out to as much as 40%. It's also worth noting that for gaming with a discrete GPU, the Ryzen 5 5600, which can be had for just $130 US right now, is a much better value option that's not just cheaper, but it's also faster. So there you have it, the most anti-consumer product that we've seen from AMD in some time, 
at least in my opinion, of course, I'd like to know your thoughts on this. I know some people will point to the value of the 5700 as some kind of justification for the misleading naming. The 5700 is 15% cheaper than the 5700X over at Newegg right now, and we found that on average it's 14% slower for gaming, or 16% if you compare the 1% lows. So in that sense, it's not bad value, though it does drop PCIe 4.0 support, which can be problematic depending on the GPU you use. I think the fact that the 5700 isn't bad value, at least based on current Newegg pricing, is good, though the 5700X has sold for as little as $170 US in recent months, so it's not exactly a new price point. My main issue is that you're not getting what you'd expect based on the name. I've even spoken with a few people in the industry, people who are fairly up to speed with these products, and all of them just assumed that the Ryzen 7 5700 would be a slightly dialed down version of the 5700X. And some of these people were even going to sell the 5700. Again, I even bought the 5700 under the same assumption, and although the part has technically existed for years as an OEM only model, I've really never heard of it until recently when I could actually buy it. Admittedly though, I didn't really care what it was at the time, I just bought it because I knew it would be interesting, or at least you guys would be interested in it, but if I had to guess, I would have thought it would be a similar deal to say the 5600 and 5600X, because that's what we've seen from AMD's Ryzen lineup for seven years now. Had AMD named this thing appropriately, so something like the 5700GF for example, then I think it would have been a decent product at the right price, of course. But as it stands, it is too anti-consumer for my liking, and I recommend you avoid it. The 5600 is a better gaming CPU anyway, and of course it's cheaper. And as we've known for a long time now, cash does matter more than cores for gaming, at least within reason. So yeah, cutting the cash in half on that thing. Not great for gaming. Anyway, that is going to do it for this video. As I said, let me know what you think about the name of this product, AMD releasing it, all that sort of stuff, because I'm keen to read your feedback. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you'd like to join us uh, for our exclusive Discord server, behind the scenes content, Q&As, and monthly live streams, then check out our Floatplane and Patreon accounts, because yeah, either of those will give you access to some pretty cool perks. But other than that, thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you again next time.